You're listening to The Kylo Show, the podcast where we talk about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. And it starts right now. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to The Kylo Show. We are back. For some more. Out. Yes. Always fun. Always fun. We're like 75 deep on this. I know. Every time they say the number, we're a little shocked. Really? That's how many we've been doing? Many? Good Lord. <laughs> every week. When I remember when we said we were going to do this every week, we were like, I don't know. Yeah. This sounds crazy. But, sounds like a lot. But we've done it. Big commitment. I know. We're almost a year and a half in. Getting closer. But wild. So wild. Wild to think of. We're so thankful, though, that everyone's been listening. It's been it's been a fun ride for sure here yeah. at the Kylo Show. So, But with that, I feel like this is the joke appropriate topic to segue to, which is we've kind of grown a little community. We have. We have like a like, kind of like a little church out there. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have been listening a every week. A little church of 15,000 people or whatever it is. <laughs> it's a bunch of people that want to do healthy relationships. That's I, I that's know. what I've it, we keep hearing about. It feels super important. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm honored to be able to make a contribution every week to whole healthy families yep. saving the world. That's it. That's what we're chasing after. Yeah. So today's topic is God's design for community and what that means, what that looks like, and kind of just talking through it a little bit. I think community has been a big topic around here and uh, we've got some fun things that have been on our heart that we're actually making happen. So community felt appropriate to start covering. Right. So... Right, it's like uh, God created mankind to replicate who God is, right? God is a community, which mm-hmm. is, this is always kind of a strange, <laughs> we talk about the Trinity, you're like, sure. what, three in one, what, you know? He's like the a, greatest like superhero. A, like an egg, <laughs> you know, like like a uh, solid gas and... What's the other one? Fluid, you know, liquid, liquid, yeah, like ice and um, body, soul, and spirit, and mm-hmm. this thing, you know, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Father, is a community, which is, of course, a community living in perfect harmony, <laughs> which is truly only God. <laughs> it, well, that is, that's what it that's what it looks like right there. If you can if you can live together in perfect unity, mm-hmm. you have achieved the epitome of being human. So Christ likeness would be the, you know, living in community. Can you do it? Will you do it? Will you require yourself to get out of yourself? Because mm-hmm. I think the you know the opposite is isolation, and it feels like it's becoming more and more the goal. Sure, I I just think you know from the very beginning God's been on a search to have us with people. Mm-hmm. I, when he created Adam, and he had all these animals, and like all right, that's your people. Well, it's not working out. Okay, you need somebody else. Yeah, because <laughs> the animals are not your people. There you go. Yeah. Adam, you got this perfect place. Yeah. It's perfect. Just run around, do whatever you want. And then he goes, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> this isn't working. This isn't good. <laughs> this, this tiger is not talking to you very yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we you have know to create, you need. yeah. You need some people. Mm-hmm. Let's start getting some people around you. And so a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common is... Mm-hmm. Community and community has, you know, hiding in the word common unity. So we put these common characteristics, and they and really, you're not going to be in a community that you don't share something, right? Um, and you know, you can you can be a community of motorcycle riders, you know, like motorcycle riders see each other on the road, you know. One of them's coming from Florida, and the other one's coming from Canada, and they wave at each other. Like, 
That's weird. No, this is common unity. There's mm-hmm. a community of bikers, a community of cyclists, and it it, uh, it it goes all over the world. I remember reading about uh, these people that uh, had a community around scissors. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, they all use the same scissors. Mm-hmm. I, I forget the name of the scissor now, but it was you know it Something was special. Uh, it was in the book Brain on Fire, Brains on Fire. Oh, okay. And it was it was fantastic about how you actually make a create a movement mm-hmm. is by creating a community. Yeah. Like all right, well that's that's a smart idea. We should gather around a common interest, and in and in there you find your people. Yeah. You find you know people you want to invest in, people you want to sacrifice for, people you want to be around, people you enjoy. Mm -hmm. I think it's funny how you said scissors. I think about we got introduced to the 4-H world and we didn't have the things that you need, you know, Mm -hmm. to take care of a lamb or to shear a lamb or to whatever with a pig. And all of a sudden, you know, we have this group of people and we have this shared common goal and the value for assisting, nurturing, loving, giving to someone that has a shared value and wanting to reach the same goal. I I don't know. I've never met these people before, but Mm -hmm. here I am borrowing equipment that's worth hundreds of dollars. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you don't even know me. You're going to come to my house and help me shear this lamb? Yeah. Who are you? But it's it is again. It's rallied around this common unity that we want to see you be successful. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the heart that I see that the Lord has is that we get to be a successful group of people together when yeah. we live in community. Yeah, and it is interesting that He has created us to be successful human beings. Yeah, yes, that is His whole goal. Yeah, He wants, he us, wants us to be. He successful. wants us to thrive. He wants mm-hmm. us to get the most out of life. Uh, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but mm-hmm. I have come to give you life in abundance, yeah. right? So more than you could ever use. That's mm-hmm. the heart of God towards us. And then for whatever reason, you think of, you know, you, when you think of the Tower of Babel, mm. right? You know, they have this awareness that if they rally, they'll be super powerful. And they use that super powerful. Yeah. To get rid of God. <laughs> like, you know what we could do? We could be so awesome. Yeah. We could get rid of God. And you think, that is the dumbest thing you could ever do. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the trouble of, of human beings becoming powerful is they decide, now, mm-hmm. now we could get rid of our dad. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm smarter than my dad. I think that kind of goes pretty deep, you know, in yeah. human beings. It's like... It's been there a long time. I can, you know, w- this generation's smarter than the last generation. We're better... We'll never do it like those cave people, you know, or whatever. Like, okay. The power of community is really for us to tap into how do we become more like God, mm-hmm. not how do we replace him mm-hmm. With later, it's science. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we've rallied around discovering creation that had a creator, but we we begin to become so smart understanding creation that we think, you know what we could do? We could get rid of God now, and here we go again. And now we're in another episode of the Tower of Babel. Mm. Essentially, we're smarter than our dad. We're smarter than the last generation. We are are awesome. Like, oh, and then everything starts to come apart. The wheels come off as soon as we get rid of the goal of becoming more and more Mm Christ-like. It's crazy how far back that lie or that agenda goes, even in the garden, you know, of he doesn't want you to be powerful. He doesn't want you to know what true power is. So the... The deceiver has been after this this life for a really long time, and it 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 really does weave its way through the Bible and and even to present day over and over again. Mm-hmm. Is let me convince you of this mm-hmm. so that you position yourself to be 
unsuccessful. Yeah, so that that that's a great point. The the whole temptation conversation is God's afraid that you'll become like him. Mm-hmm. And Adam and Eve had one rule yeah. basically, you know. <laughs> don't do one. that right there, okay? <laughs> if you gave it, your kid one rule, they'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's just baffling that we at one point we had one rule Mm -hmm. just don't do that one thing you can do whatever else you want (laughs) whatever you can come up with do it but that one thing that one thing don't do it why (laughs) yeah one rule so that it could demonstrate that they had a ruler a rule maker god was the ruler because there was one rule which is so oppressive right so (laughs) such a said this is you need to escape from this (laughs) tyranny and the the deceiver says, oh, God's afraid if you break his rule, mm-hmm. then you'll be the rule maker. You'll be the ruler. And so that gets in the heart of man. and Well, it was in the heart of man. He just it got Unleashed out it, yeah. and took over. Yeah. And that is the thing that keeps busting his communities apart. Because mm-hmm. after the Tower of Babel and that whole, you know, that whole sequence of uh, you know, pretty pretty rough experience in the fall of man, uh, right <laughs> up until the you know day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes and introduces a brand new community. Mm-hmm. Here you go. The Holy Spirit comes and fills uh, all those who were in the upper room. Mm-hmm. You know, not just the men. Everybody. Yeah, all of them, 150 of them, boom, all of them got filled with the spirit of power, Mm -hmm. the spirit of love, the spirit of unity. And that becomes the seed that goes into the world around by, you know, building community. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is ironic that no matter what you do to, the seed of Christ, no matter how you try to kill it, mm-hmm. like uh, that that meme that says uh, they they tried to bury us, and then they f- discovered that we were seeds. You know, like mm. oh yeah, that is Christianity. Because every time you try to snuff it out, every time you try to break that community, that common union, every time you you try to get rid of it, destroy it attack it every time mm-hmm. it resurrects you know, I'm thinking about Antioch when they decided to just increase the uh, the attacks you know they're they're going to oppress the Christians they're going to destroy them and all they did is like hit this fire yeah. surrounded by weeds and it just went up. And so Antioch ends up being this first apostolic sending center. And now Christianity is everywhere. Because they were all comfy. You know, they're all like cozy, like they had their little kumbaya groups. <laughs> and here comes the attacks and persecutions. And now they're they're spread all over the world. And it and now they got a bigger problem. Mm-hmm. Like that uh Back, uh, was this called uh, spiders and starfish, or what was that? Oh, um, S- starfish and spiders, maybe something like that. I, uh-huh. I can't remember the title I, of that book, but it I was, see the the cover on my. I can see it. But that that I think it's in there that that story of they had all these starfish problems everywhere and on this coastline, so they scooped them up all one day, and some genius decided to, <laughs> let's chop them into little tiny pieces and then throw them back in the water. Feed the fishes with them. <laughs> yeah, we killed them. No, actually you didn't kill them, because they Jeez. just keep growing off the pieces. Mm-hmm. So now you have multiplied, and that really feels like the body of Christ again and again and again. Wherever it you try to stamp it out, you end up multiplying. I, I think, you know, I love that God's in the beginning of creation, he, he did this with Adam, like you need you need a person. Mm-hmm. And then when Jesus came, he found his twelve disciples and he's like, These are my people. And and so it's 
this theme that God keeps displaying, whether it's from the beginning of creation to when he sent his son that says, I'm trying to show you that you are created for people and, and this is how you do it, you know? And I, I love that obviously Jesus created a community, um, by his teachings and, and, and they would come to see him, but he, he really had a small network of people that he, he poured into and that's, and, and so like the starfish analogy that just multiplied and it's just beautiful. You know, I, I think that's sometimes that, you know, we have these mega churches and we have these small groups and I think God's in, in both of them. It's mm -hmm. just a different design mm -hmm. of this community that he's speaking of. Yeah. I, I, and I think that, you know, the large scale s celebration gathering, filling arenas with believers, um, those conference it, moments. It, well, just this giant feedback mm -hmm. that we are a people. Sure. Like I remember going to, uh, promise keepers. Mm -hmm. I went to one in Eugene, Oregon, duck stadium and 40,000 men mm -hmm. s s worshiping together. It, you know, you could just, it, we just stop. I would just stop and just it's amazing. listen. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. And the, the catalytic joining mm -hmm. together of uh, hearts and minds and purpose, you know, it, it, it no doubt is probably got, the devil shaking in his boots, like, <laughs> oh my gosh, if these guys figure yeah. out who they are. Yeah. And they did a great job of, you know, breaking it down into small groups because that's really where the life is exchanged day to day is is with your your uh, your your friends, mm -hmm. your your smaller community. It's got to be real. It's got to be tangible. You you gotta have somebody that you can call mm -hmm. and say, help me. I'm you know yeah. She's making me crazy. What do I got to do? You know? These kids, I don't yeah, know. What to I don't do. know. I'm out of money. I, you know, I, can't, I don't feel like a man anymore. Whatever. I mean, you, you, it's got to turn into a phone call. Mm -hmm. So you go from 40,000 in a coliseum, you know, an arena, and it's got to turn into a phone call. Yeah. It's got to be practical. Like, who am I going to call when I am in trouble? Mm -hmm. I remember uh, we went, took a youth group with us to the Chicago Jesus Culture Conference. Mm -hmm. I don't know what arena we were in, but... United. Okay. It was massive. Mm -hmm. I just remember standing there with our, our kids, our youth kids, and the same experience you're describing, the, the arena is going crazy. And I just remember thinking... Wow, these these kids, if they can latch on to this staying alive their whole life, mm -hmm. they're gonna be okay. And it's and that's why I mean, when our girls go to camp or are they, you know, they go to a conference, I just think these are those moments that you're searching. How do I keep this experience, this this fire, this desire of I I love being in this room, and what happens in this room is so energizing to my faith, but I got to do it with my friend. Yeah. So we get to reference this moment. We get to talk through that night that was unreal or that we saw somebody get healed or, you know, I got touched by the power of the Holy Spirit for the first time like I'd never had before. Mm -hmm. I, that's the, I love the, the big experiences, but when you get to do it in a smaller group, you come home and you take it. It is, it's kind of like this, you took a little ember with you, and you're going back to your campfire, like, okay, mm -hmm. it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And and this, you know, idea of, of I guess a question I have is, is what are the embers that you've got going on in your own community? Mm -hmm. Like, are you pulling from something that's helping you keep alive this fire for what God's doing? You know, it's been a crazy season. What, where's the hope in your community? What, you know, are these, is this something that's going on in your life? Mm -hmm. Like this is, is it, it's an easy thing to think that just Sunday morning we go, that we're getting it, but is there someone that you're calling afterwards? Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the, that's the next level that I think is, is really 
God's hope for community when he talks about this? I think the design of community really is to also to grow us up. Mm. You know, I, we have a little puppy at our house, <laughs> Yes, we do. you know, and there's seven people there. And this little puppy is trying to figure out where to go potty. You know, like, I, I, where is he? You know, where do I go potty? I don't even know where to go potty. Yeah. And like, okay, well, let us teach you. We're going to have to show you over and over again where this is, where this works and where this doesn't work. And it, so it, 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 I remember when I got saved, I had no idea what the heck. Mm-hmm. I, I'm 21 years old. I've never seen a Bible. I've never. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never talked to anybody about Jesus. I have, other than maybe Noah's Ark and David and Goliath, I've never heard any Bible story. Mm -hmm. Certainly didn't hear any about Jesus. Yeah. Heard a couple, you know, of the the big ones, but Mm -hmm. I don't even know how I heard those. But when I got saved, my life had a lot of destructive momentum in it. And I was introduced into a community, a group of people who had a common unity around life and love in Jesus and uh, becoming more Christ-like. That that was their goal. And I I came in and I thought, they're going to think I'm the stupid... I I mean, I shut down. I was just so quiet everywhere I went. And... I was basically learning what it meant to be born again. Mm -hmm. I was learning where to go potty. I had no (laughs) idea where do you go potty anyway. Do we ever potty again? Because I I heard that you guys don't potty. I'm like, oh, no, we potty. We just potty over there now. Like, oh, my gosh. And that that had to be demonstrated. There, There... there was the Sunday morning message, which I maybe understood 10% of. And then in this small group, I would ask questions like, what did he mean by that? What is that? What? I don't, I still don't understand all this Jesus blood stuff. Why, you know, I was, sure. a, I was a meat cutter. I got get blood, <laughs> but I I'm don't not really want to, why are we drinking it? <laughs> I never, never thought of that being having power in the blood. And we keep singing this song, power, there's power, power. In the, I, you know, I, what are you talking about? And so as we, you know, we would meet together and I would have questions. I could call different ones. And the, the message got translated into character in my life hmm. through the involvement. And your mom and I, you know, we weren't married the first year of our Christianity, so we were in different communities, different groups within the same community, but we had totally different, you know, leaders and cultures in our little sure. groups. And um, when we did get married, we had to figure out, okay, well, which community's right? You know, which one's better? So we had to do all that, like in-laws or something. So we went to both for a while, and then we picked a third. Oh, we, we just did a third one good. together as a couple. And it was, that's how we learned to be married. It's mm-hmm. where we learned to be parents. It's where we learned how to talk about money with each other. It's where we learned about, um, you know, w- how do you follow yeah. Christ? You know, how do you hear Jesus talking to you about five years from now? Who you were created to be? How do you how do you receive a destiny? You know, how, all of that was learned in a community, and so I can see why the devil would war against people. Sure getting in, staying in, and thriving in a community. Yeah. Which, you know, again, we were talking about community because we've got some really fun things that we're building, and and I I, I know that we talk a lot about the, the, the podcast community and, um, you know, the, from the questions or the testimonies that we get sent in to, you know, more now than ever, anywhere that I am, you know, or you're speaking or we go somewhere, they're like, we love the show. And, you know, it helped me here and there. And I think that that's the part that 
really has been putting on display that there's been a community that's been growing from the Kylo show, which is super fun. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, where you've got like, like-minded people chasing after a whole healthy families are going to save the world like never before. I think we've, we've created a phrase that a lot of people are rallying behind and, and with that, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to hear. I, I shared it with my sister. I shared it with my mother-in-law. I shared it with my neighbor. Um, and I think that if you want to keep sharing it, the best way to do that is to give reviews on Spotify or Apple. I don't really know where you give reviews for the podcast, but do that. And um, I think the other place too, so that we can keep staying connected to this community that we love is our email list. And if you're not familiar with the Loving on Purpose newsletter that we send out, um, you might want to go to our website and check that out so you can sign up so you can hear about the things that we're doing so we could stay connected to you outside of just the Kylo show because we do other things. Guys. We do other things. We do lots of other things. We are capable of other things. <laughs> but you don't hear about all of them because we just had the show. But um, yeah, so as we just go down this journey of community, we really just want to say thank you for being a part of ours and we're excited to be part of your community and we'll see you soon. All right, well, we're going to take some questions now. And um, the first question that we have comes to us from Alex. Hi, Danny and Brittany. Thank you again for everything you guys are doing through uh, Loving Your Purpose, the Academy, the Kylo Show, uh, the books I've read. Thank you so much for all your help. I have a question about helping young people with their choice of friends. I work with a young boy in grade seven who, uh, when God looks at him, sees a life changer. His behavior at the moment, a lot of the time in class, is the complete opposite of that. I have a suspicion. It's There's a few things going on, but I do think part of it is who he's choosing to hang out with him and the influence they're having on his behavior. So when it comes to keeping your love on, when it comes to boundaries and obviously only be able to control myself, um, what wisdom do you guys have about making young people uh, and our kids aware of our concerns about who they're hanging out with and the effect um, who they're hanging out with is affecting our connection, you know, be it a teacher to student or um, parent to child and um, to just, yeah, help them make some great decisions about their friends. Thank you so much for your help. God bless. Well, I like that Alex gave a listing of all the things that we do before he asked this question, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on all of our fun adventures here at Loving On Purpose. So, yeah. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's committed. He's, he's paying attention. He is. Yeah. He is. That's awesome. Well, I have a seventh grader, mm. and um, I'm not a teacher, but I am a parent. So I've had our share of, mm, well, and we have more than one child. So I would say that there's been lots of opportunities for friends that feel questionable mm. to our core values, to our, our standards, and um, just our culture. So uh, that, there's definitely been some op- some moments where I feel like threat is a too big of a word, but um, unpleasant friction mm. in our home mm. that's been created by some of friend dynamic or choosing of people. Mm-hmm. And for us, a lot of the process, um, I think because of our connection, so if starting there, the, the fact that we are pretty connected with both of our, our older girls, our level of connection creates opportunity where we can give some pretty real feedback. But before we ever give that feedback, it's usually some questions like, Hey, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, when you talk to your brother, you seem really disrespectful. And I notice that you seem more disrespectful after you come back from so-and-so's house. Have you noticed that? And sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't notice that. Most of the time I'd say no. Um, 
And I then usually ask, why do you think that is? What's going on there? Because I notice that this person seems to be okay with talking to their siblings like that. And that's not a way that we talk to each other. So what's going on here? And that's typically the dialogue that I would have in the exchange is leading with some questions. Um, if they're not getting it at all with my questions to the fact that, okay, maybe my behavior is being influenced by this person or maybe my exposure to their culture I'm giving permission to and bringing it over here, then I usually give a little bit more clarity to, well, mm -hmm. this is no fun. I'm having no fun. And I'm afraid that if you go over to this person's house, you're going to come back with this. You smell like their house. I don't like that yeah, smell. You smell like the house you were just mm -hmm, at, so mm -hmm. we noticed. Yeah. So that's typically how we would walk through a process with um, our kids in that. Um, and then I would, do you want to talk to your brother that way? Do you want to treat me that way? Is that your goal? Is that what you want me to experience in our relationship? Is that you're disrespectful or you can be hurtful? And, of course, they're like, no, I don't. I'm like, okay, well, I, I don't want that either. And I don't know what to do except for potentially limit your exposure unless you can figure out how you're going to manage yourself. Because crazy people, no fun people, disrespectful people, people that you want to like you but have a very different culture, they're not going away. This is going to be, you know, from any job they ever have to maybe a family they marry into. I don't know. This, these people are here to stay. They're not going away. But how you manage yourself, it's completely up to you. Mm -hmm. As I was listening to Alex describe that setting, I was thinking, gosh, that was me. Hmm. You know, I was that kid. I was the kid that uh, was always trying to get somebody's approval, always trying to make a commotion, make everybody laugh. Because school was not working for me at all, but I was funny. You know, yeah. I was funny, and and I had friends, you know, because I could crack up a classroom or whatever. So I was always disruptive and sent out of the class or sent to the principal's office. Um, and I had a shady group of friends because I lived in a shady part of town, and, the, you know, walking distance was shady. You know, like, okay, yeah. this is, we hang out together. So it was, it was, I'm sure to the, you know, the teacher looking at my life, it, it wasn't going to turn out well for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I had some really unbelievable, effective teachers that spoke some things into my life. I, I, I wrote it in the foreword of um, Bernie's book, Loving mm -hmm. Our Students on Purpose. But... It was a story of Mr. Dunch. Mm -hmm. uh, he was my uh, one of my high school teachers. And I remember, I think it was algebra, because math has never been my topic. And, uh, and he was, he could clearly see that I was acting out and, and or just disengaged. Mm -hmm. And I remember him sitting in front of me one day, and he said, Danny, I don't know if you know this or not, but there is something special about you. Mm-hmm. And I hope that you find that, you know. And I I looked at him like it didn't go in. Mm -hmm. You know, like, whatever, dude. But it went in, and it bounced around inside me because I'm hoping, I'm hoping bad that something there's something special in there because mm -hmm. when I look around in my life, I see nothing special, and it's losing that its glow, you know. And so I'm a teenager then, and... I ended up getting saved at 21. I went to school thinking I had a learning disability because my grades were, you know, my grade point average was a point, started with a point, yeah. which is not supposed to start with no. a point. There's supposed to be a number on this mm -hmm. side, you know. And uh, I went to junior college. I took a class. I got an A. 
<laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness, I don't have a learning disability. I just had an effort disability. I never tried. Sure. So I got my master's degree and I drove back to Weaverville. I went to Trinity High School. I found Mr. Dunch and I held up my master's degree to him and I showed him. And he said, I told you. <laughs> like he no. remembered no. that there's something special in there. Mm-hmm. So teachers, parents, friends of families, Sunday school teachers, you know, just remember you are adding something to the box of these children. Yeah. You don't get to determine their outcome, but you do get to add something to the box that they have moving forward to believe, mm-hmm. you know, and there's and there's bad stuff that people add to the box too that they have to work out of. But as a teacher, as a parent, as a grandparent, a friend, Remember, you know, you have some powerful stuff that you can add for that child one day as an adult to reach in and grab and go, I hope this is true. Mm -hmm. So don't ever stop prophesying into Mm -hmm. the destiny of any kid that you cross paths with. Yeah. I I think that... um in at Bethel, I worked with the children's department, and I had the, all the kids that come off the buses, you know, and they are these hard life kids, you know, and they're in preschool. And I remember having this one kid over and over again, and and my one of my teachers under me was just so frustrated. She had a short fuse with him. She was so frustrated, and I remember telling her, I said, "You have no idea who this child could be." I said, "But you." could forever be mer- remembered to him as something positive or something negative. And that's completely up to you. What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. And so I think Alex, you are, you seem like you're doing your homework to be, to, to be a voice of hope mm-hmm. to this kid and to the kids that you work with. So I would just encourage you to keep being that voice of hope and truth and um, be a Mr. Dunce, you know, be a Mr. Laux. That was one of mine. And um, I, I think that you just call out the greatness and, and keep building that connection so you can ask and, and give influence when they're ready for it. So it sounds like you're doing a great job, Alex. So good question. Great stories, as always. Okay. Um, the next question we have comes to us from Megan today. Hi, Danny and Brittany. Thanks so much for doing the Kylo Show. I wanted to get your feedback on how to build community if you've moved to a new place and you don't know anyone. Um, I come from a pretty tight-knit community and I just moved across the states and I am looking to start community around me and I feel like I'm not sure what where to start or where to go. So I would love some help. Thanks so much. I think this is a pretty common question. People moving around all the time these days. Yeah, mm-hmm. lots, lots of moving. Mm-hmm. Lots of where do I start, especially when you've got such a rich, thriving community wherever you were, yeah. whether it's work or just God's calling you somewhere else, whatever it is, there's this, all of a sudden you feel like you're on an island. You know, I remember Ben and I moving down to, to Sacramento. We had quite a little community in mm-hmm. Reading, mm-hmm. and and when we moved... I, we had some big expectations that we were going to plug right in because there was like 60 people that moved down here with their, all their children included. And we had a young family. So we're like, yes, we're just going to insert. Insert here. It's going to work. It's going to be great. It's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And I, I think that the really breakthrough came in and willingness to be uncomfortable in the search, you know, which when I say that, what I mean is, you know, we we went from running teams at Bethel to, you know, not being on a team to to not being on a team to then you know being, <clears throat> you know, under somebody that was probably ten years younger than us running the 
greeters team. So we're standing outside. I mean, so just drastic from what we were doing. You know, I was meeting with, you know, uh, you were training. I was training a hundred people, and and then the children's ministry. Ben was doing the same. He had all sorts of different people he was working with from the school ministry. I mean, it's just massive. To we're handing out pamphlets of this is where we, your tithe goes. <laughs> we want we want you to dress up in this hot dog and it's stand out on close. the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, and not that that was the beneath us. It just was such a drastic difference of you know well established and and just grown so much in influence and, and leading to okay we have to be really willing to I'm I'm desperate for community so I'm going to serve in whatever way you need so I can get connected. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's the part that I would encourage you is, is being willing to serve. Mm-hmm. And um you know and if if your character s- stands out then you get promoted if you if you're doing a good job of taking care of that vision that someone has and you usually get promoted but it's really being able to get in there and just serve the vision of the house and i think finding a church is kind of like a little bit like a dating scene you know does this feel like my people no okay i'm gonna have to figure out what my people feel like you know and that's a process too i've walked through some people trying to figure out you know, is this is this home for me? Mm-hmm. And and hopefully, you know, you have people that you don't have to let go of mm-hmm. before you yeah. get in this community. So you can stay you can stay connected to some input in your life and some yeah. some comforting conversations and some people that sound familiar and that sort of thing. Yeah. Hopefully, that that Doesn't didn't go leave. away yeah. in the move. Um, some people don't have community anywhere they go. They just gripe about it, and they don't ever build it. They just find all kinds of reasons to stay the same, but community actually changes you. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to find a good one, because so it calls you up. Because you can also find a downward community that disintegrates what you were. So, you know, pay attention to, A, you have to be able to learn and grow from your community. Mm -hmm. You come into a community, you cannot come in there expecting them to learn from you. Yeah. Okay, I've come here to change your community (laughs) because that's not going to happen. I am the leader. (laughs) Yeah, you're not. You've come into this community to be adopted, Mm -hmm. essentially. And so be willing to learn the culture of that group. And maybe it's a different part of the world you know it's a different part of the country different okay. and you're like wow these people are weird they do some weird <laughs> stuff you know i just imagine you know how long would it take for me to be wearing cowboy boots and a cowboy hat if i moved to texas <laughs> well i have i take it with me you know but it wouldn't take long at all but i i do think that you know there's a uh an, an adaptation element that i need to be willing to do as well as keep your standards high. Mm-hmm. You know, don't compromise. It's kind of like the dating scene. Like, don't give up on your standard because you haven't found who you're looking for yet. Keep that thing up there because you will be really sad if you lower your standards and marry it, right? Yeah. Or have children with it or whatever. And like, poof, that didn't go well. Yeah. So I think paying attention to where you want to be and then be willing to be adopted. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Well, good questions as always. And we're going to jump into our testimony. Okay, well, today's testimony comes to us from Craig. Hey, Danny and Brittany, my name is Craig. Uh, First, I want to thank God. God is the one who introduced me to your show through my wife, but it was all because of God. And I, and I just, I needed to hear the two podcast episodes I listened to today, which I've only listened to two, but I'm going to listen to prior and I'll listen to future ones as well. But I was in the 
kitchen this morning making coffee before work and my wife was in the kitchen as well and she had a podcast on and it was you guys and I hear you guys talking. It was the Overcome Your Overwhelm series that you guys did, those two pods. And I'm listening and like, man, they're talking about trigger levels. They're talking about how people can act with trigger levels. They're talking about this drip line of adrenaline. They're talking about how it can, you know, going on vacation, how you think you can just go and get away from it, all this stuff. And basically just talking about how we need to have the proper systems and the proper setup in our, in our subconscious and our, in our lives to be able to combat that. And that just spoke to me because that's, I mean, that's me. You talk about flight fight or flee. And I mean, I might be the perfect definition of that person. Cause I live with that just about every day. I'm uh, you know, I was 12 when my brother got into a dirt bike accident that left him paralyzed and our lives were flipped upside down. And from that moment on, I mean, I didn't realize that I, I, I've had a victim's mentality. I was always told, you know, you were kind of the silent victim in this Craig, because you know, your life was impacted too, even though physically it didn't, it didn't affect you. And man, I didn't realize the emotional and psychological impact it was going to have on my life too, in a negative way, because of not healthily dealing with it, not having somebody, you know, not talking to a counselor or a pastor. You know, I, I thought back then I was 12 and, you, and even leading up to about a couple of years ago, I thought if you share or if you get help or you go to a counselor or whatever, that, that doesn't show you hurt. It shows you're weak. That was the lie I've been living with. And it's still hard for me to open up to people. I've gotten a lot better over the last couple of years, but it's, it's just really hard, but I just really, you know, appreciate this, this, these, your podcast and the two episodes I listened to, and I'm excited to listen to, to other pods as well. Um, just in regards to this, the regulation of our system and understanding our system and needing to know our triggers and just wholeheartedly understand like what that stress level is in your life and what that anger level is. And when you reach it, how do you combat that? How do you stop it? What, what needs to happen? And that's, I've, that's been a big struggle for me. Um, failed marriage. I'm on a sec, I'm on my second marriage. I love my wife, but I'm, I'm, she's my target and not, not on purpose but she's my target. Whenever I feel threatened, I feel disrespected. I feel hurt, anger. And that was triggers, trigger, 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 trigger. Next thing you know, I'm seeing red and I, I just can't help it. And Danny, you, you mentioned how powerful the devil can be in our lives in those moments when we allow it. And you are so right. My wife says to me that, you know, I'm, I'm so good with my words and I'm really good at saying things that can cut her to her core. And that's not who I am as a person. I love my wife unconditionally and I want my marriage to work and I would give anything for it to work, but it's these unhealthy systems I've had in my life that have led me to just where I'm at and the pain and the hurt and the all these feelings that are inside you. But again, going back to the devil playing a huge part in your life when you allow it, I'm not a good, I mean, sure. I, I'm a salesman. I, I'm good with my words. I can talk, I guess, but I don't sit here and think in my mind, all these comebacks and all these negative, terrible things to say, they just come out. And sure. If you were looking at it in a perspective of what I'm actually saying and how good I am at cutting her down. Yeah. I'm great at it. That's not a, that's not a proud trait. And so I've been, you know, going to counseling, seeing, seeing different counselors and, and working on myself. Uh, I want to be a life coach. I want to be able to talk to people and help people through their trauma too. Obviously I understand I have to, I have to get mine under control um, before I could even help anybody else. But again, your guys' pod, man, I've only listened to the two episodes, like I mentioned, but they were so impactful. I'll be listening to future and past stuff that you guys have done and will be doing. And I just, I, I appreciate it so much. Um, and yeah, I found your website. First, I see the Kylo show on my wife's phone. I'm thinking, oh, sweet. I'm a Star Wars guy, Kylo Ren. But um, I, go, you know, I looked you up. I'm like, I've met Danny once. He spoke at a conference here, saw the button on the bottom right that I needed to share my testimony. And so I, I just felt like the Holy Spirit shoved me in the back, said, nope, you got to press start and start talking. So you guys are great. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I'm excited to hear more. Well, those were great episodes to to come in on. They were. And that, that's um so happy for him that it sounds like he's got some hope and some He's on a journey. He, he's definitely kind of got some momentum to make some adjustments, you know. Mm -hmm. I 
I'm so glad he got on the first two. I think we we definitely got to get in on that Kylo five. You know, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's going to be a, a really big part of your journey, Craig. Is to learn how to master those. Lots of learning in store, mm-hmm. but that's great. I mean, he sounds he sounds willing, and that's ninety percent of the battle right there. <laughs> yeah, it's willing to say yes. I need help. Yes, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm in enough pain. You know, we you say uh, people change for one of two reasons: pain or vision. It's normally pain. Yeah. And um, you know, pain is quite a big motivator. And and you know, when we had Margaret on the the podcast, she really just kind of opened up this. You know, pain manifests itself in so many ways, and whether we choose to ignore it or fight it or participate in it it's it's doing something so what are we going to do with this and as messy as it sounds this is the the path to whole healthy families Mm -hmm. is you you got to be willing to face the pain face the fear learn new things change prioritize your connections you know it's 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 if it was easy everybody would be doing it right (laughs) yeah that's true very true well, hopefully, Craig, you know, another really great resource that we have that's along the topic of what you were, you got to be a part of on this podcast is the uh, Life Academy course that we have, Overcoming Your Overwhelm. Mm-hmm. Um, Margaret does that, and uh, it's wonderful. So if you haven't checked that out, you should. You should jump in on that. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on The Kylo Show. It's, it's fun to, again, have a, an extension of, you as our community and uh, we're really excited that you're running with us to chase down and help you know the message that whole healthy families are going to save the world so we're excited to to be part of that journey with you see you next time yep thanks for listening never miss an episode of the kylo show by subscribing to apple Podcasts, spotify or watch us on the loving on purpose youtube channel don't forget to submit your questions and testimonies to the kylo show.com The Kyla Show is produced by Ali Armiding, co-produced by Ashley Beck and Anna Hill, sound engineer and edited by Taylor Silk, and show promoter Christian Zamora. Don't forget, whole healthy families, gonna save the world.